Hey, how's it going, Farm Family? This is Nico. And Natalie. And we are here back in Florida at home at the Brown Family Farm, AKA our Brown Farmhouse. And Nana did a good job, y'all. I ain't yeah. gonna lie. I thought I was gonna come home and all the animals were gonna have gained 20 pounds a piece and all the snacks were gonna be gone. She didn't do that bad. Oh no, <laughs> no, she she held it together. So honestly, we nothing to yeah, really like. We didn't have anything yeah. to Yeah, she did a really good job. No, but I joke. She's uh I think most of y'all know that Nana's a teacher, but she also does like their 4-H or something like that, doesn't she? Or Yeah. She used to do it when she was in Louisiana and now she's starting yeah. here in Florida. So the the she works at a middle high school. So it has middle school and high school. And they have a barn. Um, and they have like a garden, animals. They have cows and pigs. chickens and pigs and rats. She does all of that at the school. So our, she does that at school. What we have here was in good hands with Nana. And now that we're back, y'all, we have something that we have two days to complete. But we're going to try to finish it today mm -hmm. because the boys are getting antsy. Um, and we committed to like mid-September. Here we are, mid-September. To getting them in with the girls um but the bucks are like it's time to go chomping at the bits <laughs> y'all so uh we have to finish this fencing project that y'all saw us begin two videos ago so we're about to get to it and i told y'all i was going to get an auger because it's too hot for all that post hole digger stuff so um i picked that up this morning i only have a half day rental and it cost after tax, $61. So, we gotta get to it. We have 19 holes. Yeah. We're gonna drill these holes, and we're waiting for Tractor Supply to deliver our uh, fencing, which is gonna be cattle panel, and the post. So, we're and gonna we're, go and ahead. And we're waiting on another package today, too. So, we'll see if that comes in. Yeah, yeah. So, a lot to do today, y'all. Um, we have some new subscribers, so welcome. And shout out to our OGs that have yeah. been here for a while. Y'all know we love and appreciate y'all. We take nothing for granted because there are so many videos on YouTube, especially in the homestead or farming niche you could be watching. But right now you're here with us and we're about to get to this project. So let me open this trunk up so y'all can see what we're working with right now. So I have my concrete. I have some more dog food for this guy, some more chicken feed, layer pellets, and here's the auger, y'all. And I got the eight inch post hole digger. So, and then he is not sleep. <laughs> Look at baby Pharaoh, y'all. We parked the car in the shade, got the AC going. He has his toy. So we, we don't like to put him in, in the sun. So we just check on him because the project is right here. Right here, you see the line? We're just gonna be down right here, so the car's right here. All right, Ma, we're gonna set this camera up, figure out how to use this thing, and we're gonna get to it. All right, y'all, so I need each post to be about four feet deep. So here's the holes that I did too, that I did last time with the post hole digger, when I said, uh-uh, I need an auger. And look at, <laughs> look at Tucker. Excuse me, Tucker, I need to show them. So I'm just gonna put the stick in the hole like that, and that's going to make sure that all of the posts are going to be at the same depth. So we have that. Mom has the auger. We're about to put it together, crank it up, and get going. All right, y'all. So I'm giving Nico instructions on how to use this. So, babe, the red handle here. Look at his face. Y'all, I said all this before she was playing. But go ahead. The and Educate me, mama. And this is how you, and that gets the motor going. Let's see if he listens. Oh. Don't oh. dig a hole right there, babe. Oh. <laughs> oh. I thought that one was done. I need it wider. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
this is so funny. There you go. That's our stick. So we'll post hole it to the right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like a little bit. But look how clean. Let me just stick the camera in there so y'all can see. Look at all those beautiful roots. All right. All right, y'all. Number three. <laughs> Number three. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put y'all to some music. Y'all know the deal. Come all you young rounders In a story I'll tell Of the promise of heaven And the warning of hell but Take heed where you ramble <laughs> Too soon you will It's so cool That was that one has some serious roots. Well, he met in the springtime, the sun sang. Two star crossed lovers. In the so we did not think about where the, lover the roots. Was so look at all these roots. And we haven't even gotten close the to the trees. But as you can see, we are running a fence in between some trees. That way we can give the goats some shade. Because look at all the shade. Look, Tucker. You didn't think about the roots. Alright, Alright. You want loving, huh? He just wants some loving. We are the folks called it yeah. home. But hell, it seemed all wrong. In the sun painted picture, in the day turned to night. Come up on the hillside, we'll have a time. If you'll bring the kisses, honey. I'll bring the wine and Keep your heart guarded Or too soon it'll fall When one walks back home, honey Only one knows it all Well, she walked up the hillside Alone one day Heart is a hunter, always knows of its prey. And her father's old pistol hanging loose by her side. When she aimed once, she never shot twice. Well, the air was so still. I was so blue before she could see the Is the red ant too? The laughter she knew. She heard two shots ring. Out. Is the red one? Down in the town. There was three on the hillside. But only one headed down. I was just a baby. Oh my goodness. I walked up the hillside, saw two mounds of clay. I'll always remember, and I'll never go. They got me, y'all. I think my foot's gonna be swollen, for real. Oh, it hurts, but 
we're over halfway done, so got to keep pushing through. But yeah, we have how many left? Seven? Those are like some underground ones. Because our the ants we have here, y'all. They're not like that. They don't build yeah. at mounds or hills. There are these big red fire ants. And they're it's all underground. So you can't see them unless you like look down. Yeah, unless you disrupt You can kind of see like the hole that's the entrance down. But they don't. There's no mounds. So. Whew. Now I know to keep looking down periodically because they just creep up on you. Yeah, maybe you should stand on this side. Y'all see that? Y'all know how like um, when you're cranking something, how hard it is to uh, crank and you have to like pull it like 30 times and stuff. Well, I've been in the gym. Watch this. Just one pull. Y'all like that? What is happening? <laughs> Done. I think it only took us like 20 minutes. If that. 25 minutes. Yeah. I would say 15 to 20. Yeah. And this is a half day rental, but we need a, what we really needed was a one tenth of a day rental because we about to take it back right now. Mm -hmm. Just waiting on this turtle to get out of the road. A federally protected turtle, <laughs> AKA gopher turtle that we can't touch at all but now it's funny out the road it's crazy and they move they move pretty fast so people always ask about these turtles well why don't you just move them we can't move them we can't kill them we can't relocate them and you see that right there it goes down underground they do they dig these big holes um luckily most of our holes are on the fence line but every now and then they do it in the middle of a pasture and it sucks because you can have a horse break a leg, a cow break a leg, animal break its leg, and you can't do anything about it. Anything about it. You can't fill the holes in, you can't do anything. So yeah. Now it's trying to figure its way back in to its to its house. Alright, y'all. Guess what? We just got home and package one of two. Here it is. Still waiting on tractor supply, by the way. So we, we are posting the ground. They're and now it's like vibe. it's like two thirty, and we have parent teacher conference tonight. But so here. we're really hopeful. I'm gonna put the box on the ground. But we've been waiting for this package, y'all, for about a week and a half now, and it got delayed due to some of the storm or hurricane damage. But due to the hurricane. Yeah, and oh. then. It got here on Friday while we were in Alabama. Yeah, y'all. So this package was supposed to be delivered before Alabama. And we were going to take it with us to Alabama. But like mama said, it got delayed. So mom, I'll give you the honors well, of opening it. He doesn't like the song. And voila. It's our shirts. <laughs> Look how good they look, y'all. Really so how many shirts is this, Mom? A hundred? Yeah. We'll round it. We got different colors. So we have white. We have men and women sizes. Unisex. Yep. So All we have... To 5X. This is unisex. There's red. We have gray. Oh, oh that's pretty. Yeah, it's called Look at that blue. blue. So we'll try to get one out of the box at some point before the video. Or I'll probably put it on the screen. Or I'll probably just put it on the screen right now as I'm speaking so you can see the different colors. But how exciting is that? So one of the things that Mama and I were literally just speaking about is 
Um, while we do have t-shirt designs on Spread Shop, which the link for that's below in the description, um, we kind of want to see how it goes if we fulfill ourselves. Yeah. So we need to set all that up. So I'm about to start working on a website and try to get all this stuff on there. So I don't know how long it's going to take, but once the website's live, y'all, we'll let you know. Now that was just box one of two. Let's go take a look at box number two. All right, y'all. So we're now in the house in the AC, but here is box number two. And I'm super excited and I hope y'all are. So, do you know what that is? What logo that is? If not, how about now? <laughs> <laughs> so y'all wanna know something funny? It's it's funny, but it's not. <laughs> the day the day after we canceled our second live, because our internet here at our house is horrible, literally the next morning got an email from Starlink saying, hey, after 18 months, almost 19 months, your Starlink is finally ready. So the very next morning, y'all, so thank you to all the prayer warriors, because what are the odds of that? Yeah. We, we made a post saying that we canceled because of how horrible our internet is. And the next morning, Starlink, after 18, 19 months, finally emails us. So we got to set this up. I have no idea what to do. I don't know if we're supposed to call it. <laughs> I'm sure the directions are inside the box because the box got here while we were in Alabama. Yeah, and my mom thought it was the yeah. shirts. <laughs> yeah, so we got to set this up and fingers crossed this allows us to have better internet. Um, fun fact, I don't think I've ever shared this, but do y'all know each and every single video we upload takes me three to four hours? To upload. To upload. So... I edit the video, which it typically take it typically takes me four to six hours to edit a video, depending on how much footage I have, how long it is. Four to six hours per video, y'all. Then after it's done editing, I have to go drive into the city, use the hotspot on my cell phone, and I sit at a Circle K, a gas station. It takes three hours or so for a video to upload. I've never shared that before. Um, and this is exciting for me because now, fingers crossed, after I edit a video, maybe a video will upload in 15, 20, 25 minutes from the house. I won't have to leave and go sit in a gas station parking lot. So I'm gonna get this set up so we could cancel that other horrible internet. Um, a video, uh, if I try to upload a video from the house, y'all, one time I said 18 hours no well one time i actually let it run for 24 hours and the upload was only at like 15 percent. so that's how i know we can never go live with our current internet so sorry to ramble i'm just so excited yay so let's open this box mom we'll try to get it all set up and we're just waiting on tractor supplies so we can finish this fence or at least get the post in the ground so We'll see y'all in the next clip, which is hopefully us receiving the delivery. All right, y'all. So on to our next project, which is going to be planting the hydrangeas that we brought home from Petals of the Past. So mom's on her way with some of the material that we need but let me show you what we have so far so here's one of the grandfather oaks that we were telling y'all about as you drive into the entrance of our property we have our bottle brush tree on this side a magnolia and then for symmetry reasons of course another magnolia and a bottle brush tree so here's the gate let me turn around you see these two beautiful grandfather oaks we have as you drive in. Nice canopy, drive under it, barn straight ahead. Just so beautiful. Whew. Love coming home every day to this. But what we want to do is we want to have hydrangeas in a circle around that tree and that tree. Due to space concerns on our way back from Alabama, and there's mama walking up, as you can see. 
we were only able to get four one gallon hydrangeas home. So what we're gonna do is plant these four around this tree. And as they mature and get larger, we're gonna take cuttings and we're gonna replant around this tree to help fill in any gaps as they continue to grow up and out. And we'll also take cuttings to create the ring around that tree. Now to create a nice flow of color around the tree, we have a Let's Dance Sky View, then a Blushing Bride, then a Let's Dance Sky View, and then another Blushing Bride. I think that's gonna look beautiful around the tree and mom agrees. So does Tucker, he's checking everything out. Now what I've done, and I didn't film this cause it's boring, <laughs> but I've dug a trench from the house all the way over here to where the hydrangeas are. And I'm gonna run drip irrigation. So I have my drip irrigation line. I have all the materials I need. Um, I have some fertilizer. And I also have some potting soil. And we're just gonna plant these, do the drip irrigation, so they'll get water each and every single day, just like all of our other trees and plants around the house. And, and from there, we'll just watch them do their thing. Can't wait to see how they grow and how they do in our soil. There's the actual drip irrigation. Here are some of the different connectors I'll need. And you can kind of see them through this bag or my emitters and everything. So already have what I need right here. Um, so mama's starting to dig the holes. I'm gonna run a drip irrigation. So hoping to have a two bird, one stone type of a situation going on here. So we can knock this bad boy out. All right, here comes Sahara with her boots on. <laughs> That's funny. All right, y'all. So I have this drip irrigation here. You see it's running down. What I'm gonna do is connect this end to the existing line. Let me get this out the way. And I'm gonna use this T connector. So after I cut the line, this side and this side will be reconnected and then the T coming out will connect the new line. Then I'll be able to run it down put it back underground by putting the dirt and then we'll get to the next part. Alright y'all, so it's coming out of the T, goes underground, and as you can see, all the way down to the tree, it's underground. So let me zoom out. So let's walk down, so I can show you. We're walking down that path right now. I've compacted the dirt by walking on it. 
So now I'm going to take it from where it is coming out of the ground right here. I'm going to use this right elbow to connect it like that. And then it's just going to circle around the tree. So get into that next. This is the tubing that I'm gonna run from the drip irrigation lining to each hydrangea, connect it by these. So this is what's gonna connect this to the brown tube. And at the end of each of these black lines, I'm gonna add my emitter. So the emitter goes in the end of this line and out of the blue part that's what drips onto each plant in this case in this case each hydrangea so about to run my black lines out to the four plants at the emitter and this project is done i do think in the future once these bushes are nice and full and we get a nice ring i would like to come back and add um some lighting so you can see it at night i think that'll be beautiful once again pretty straightforward but I need this black tubing to go from here to here so I'm going to cut it right here like that so I'm gonna punch my hole this is the tool I use to punch a hole in the brown drip irrigation and then from there, I take one of the black connections I told you about and I simply put it in the hole that was just created like that. Did you hear that snap? This connects to the other end. Like so. This, as the water runs through the brown line, when it hits right here, it now will be able to come through here and I'm going to add the emitter on this other end. And as the water runs from the brown line to the black line to the emitter, it's going to go right to the plant because I just put the emitter right at the base. I'm going to put this emitter right there, just like that. And as it drips, it's going to go down to the plant. And it's that easy, y'all. So let us do these other four and then is done how amazing is that all right y'all so before we go feed the goats just wanted to show you that this end i don't have a cap for it so when the water turns on to water the house in front of the plants as it makes its way around when it gets to this end all the water is going to be shooting out now i don't have the cap but this is all the professionals do they fold it over to put a kink in the hose just like you would a water hose and then you just zip tie it like so it's zip tied very tight but i'm gonna put a second turn in it so a double kink right and i'm gonna zip tie that so that's going to bog the water up and it won't have a way to get out of there and that's how the professionals do it without having to waste money on that fancy piece that you could buy. The piece is nice, but zip ties are cheaper, right? And if you've been following this channel long enough, you know, you already know I love my zip ties. So there's a second kink. Got it on there real tight. Now look at that. Is that clear, mama? Yeah. Got a double kink. 
So as the water makes it to this end piece, it's gonna have nowhere to go. Water comes to the end of the line. Perfect. Well, y'all, we went to Wally World and we found some mums. So Brown picked out a yellow one and one that's kind of like a burnt orange. <laughs> Was that for Texas? Maybe. <laughs> And they're both $5.97. So we took out the annuals and we're gonna replant them. And then we're gonna move these into the planters. Da, da, da. When we got there, they were adding um, fertilizer at the top. So they kind of did it already. We were gonna add some, but you can still see it on the top there. And we do have more potting soil right there that we're gonna use as we place them into these other pots so they can hang. And we're gonna put these at Graceland. That's where these came from. Looking good. It looks like fall. Feel wind? A windy night, y'all. Feels good. It does feel good. Right, Achilles? And there's the two that we took out that we're gonna replant. So we're at Graceland, as you can see. So mom's hung that one. And she's hung that one. Looking good, mama, looking good. I like it. Just in time for the drizzle. Yeah. So the orange one to the left of the door the yellow one to the right of the door. And if you're new here, Graceland is the home of Elvis and Priscilla, our peacocks who are already in bed on their swinging roost. Can you see them up there? There they go. Can you see them up there? So that roost they're on can sway, as you can see. It's on the ropes, it's not currently swaying, but that's where they love to sleep. Within their aviary, they have like seven different roosts. Yeah. And that one is by far their favorite, the one they choose the most. So we're gonna replant these. We just have to figure out where. So we're gonna keep them there for now. They'll be okay for one night. <laughs> and we gotta, we gotta figure out where we wanna put them. Maybe over by the new chicken coop. Yeah? Yeah. I think that would look good. So y'all. We are coming to get feed for the goats. And look at this. Outside the chicken coop is one of our hens. And she was sleeping on top of the wheel. <laughs> what are you doing, girl? She keeps doing that. So y'all, every now and then, you'll have a chicken that acts like they forgot where the roost goes. So all I do, whenever you have a chicken like that, it's going to take about a week of you showing them where their coop and roost is or where you want them to roost is and then they'll get back on schedule so i just drop her in here and then she's going to run in the coop so mama mama should see her go ahead and walk in and she'll get on the roost with the rest of them and it's really that easy y'all so this is my third night having to do that for her so about two or three more days and she should have it down packed again if she doesn't, then I'll just have to close her in the coop for about half a week to a week and she'll remember and everything will be okay. Here are the nesting boxes and we have eggs. I'm gonna grab those. Five eggs for today, y'all. I feel like we have some chickens playing Easter bunny and hiding eggs, but you know, we'll find them. Sorry about the grainy footage, y'all, but mama has the feed and she's about to pour it in there for the uh, goats who are impatiently uh -huh, waiting. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> impatiently waiting by the uh, gate. So the fence line feeder that we did last week for them, mama's about to pour it down the line for them.
Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. Making our way down the fence line. You can see the girls are enjoying the feed. People keep asking what this stick is. It's the stick. We call it the stick of shame. It's on Carol, and we do believe Hi, we're, we're going to try to take it off. Hi, Thor. Now, the reason it's on her is because she thinks the grass is greener and it stops her from putting her head through the fence and getting stuck. So, stick of shame. Hi, buddy. I love the way this has worked out. And Mama is over here with Thor. And look how big he's getting. Yeah, <laughs> so big. He's sitting right now and he's like above Mom's knee. <laughs> and his Hi. reflective collar. Hi, baby. And y'all, we have planned on getting the post done, but tractor supply is a little behind. They let us down. They let us down. It was supposed to be same day delivery, but we're going to get to it hopefully by the end of this week. So see you next time. Peace, y'all.